Israeli military forces discovered Russian weaponry during searches of Hezbollah militants' bases in southern Lebanon. The found weapons are described as state-of-the-art, according to an interview with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. The head of the Israeli government emphasized in his conversation with the media that, according to a UN Security Council resolution from 2006, only the Lebanese army is allowed to possess weapons in the area south of the crucial Litani River. However, in this area, Hezbollah has dug hundreds of tunnels and caches where we have just found a quantity of state-of-the-art Russian weapons, Netanyahu stated. He added that a new civil war in Lebanon would be a tragedy. It is certainly not our aim to provoke one. Israel does not intend to interfere in Lebanon's internal affairs, the Israeli Prime Minister assured in his conversation with Le Figaro discussing the IDF's operations in Lebanon. According to Netanyahu, the sole aim of the Israeli side is to allow our citizens living along the Lebanon frontier to go home and feel safe. In this interview, the Israeli Prime Minister did not specify which particular Russian weapons were discovered by the Israel Defense Forces in Hezbollah's tunnels in Lebanon. At the moment, Netanyahu has so far refrained from making direct accusations against Moscow or supplying weapons to Hezbollah. However, the fact that the Israeli leader has begun to openly emphasize that the militants were found to have Russian weapons indicates that he is no longer as loyal to the Putin regime as skeptics previously reasonably believed. It is possible that if Russia continues to supply weapons to Hezbollah, it will run into an international scandal and the Israeli leadership will finally understand and admit that it is not only the Iranian regime of the Ayatollahs, the Syrian dictator Assad, the Palestinian Hamas and the Lebanese militants who are fighting against them, but also the Russian regime. President Joe Biden has long believed diplomacy is about personal relationships, and he'll spend Friday in Berlin with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz as his time in office is on the cusp of ending. There is also a planned meeting with other leaders in the European Quad, a group that in addition to Biden and Scholz includes French President Emmanuel Macron and British Prime Minister Keir Starmer. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre described Biden as having a close relationship with Scholz, who early this year helped broker a multi-country prisoner swap that brought back to the United States the journalist Evan Gershkovich and former Marine Paul Whelan. The German leader told Biden before the deal in words to the effect, for you, I will do this. But Biden's whirlwind trip starting on Thursday is hardly just a social visit. The United States and Germany have been the largest two sources of aid to Ukraine as it fights to repel a Russian invasion. And with less than three weeks before the US presidential election, Biden also feels obligated to ready allies for the possible return to the White House of Republican Donald Trump, who has antagonized US friends while displaying an appreciation for Russian President Vladimir Putin. The administration said Biden has no plans while in Europe to meet with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, but the two spoke on Wednesday about additional military aid, with the White House announcing $425 million in assistance, bringing the total support to more than $64 billion over two and a half years. In addition to Ukraine, Biden and Scholz plan to discuss European Union relations, democratic values, trade and technology issues, global supply chains, tensions in the Middle East and security issues in the Indo-Pacific region. While in Germany, Biden will also meet with its president, Frank-Walter Steinmeier. Earlier this month, the US president had delayed a trip planned to Germany and Angola in order to oversee relief efforts ahead of Hurricane Milton making landfall in Florida. He now plans to go to Angola in December. Mr. President, Mr. Sir, Biden. Donald, sir, Donald Trump says, sir, Donald Trump says Paris is the worst vice president in history. Is it a mistake for her not to go to hell?